say. What's up, guys? You know what I'm One and only True Neptunes. <laughs> Back with another reaction video. It's your boy, Chula Barley. <laughs> and it's your boy, the backseat kid, Big Boy Trout. And sit your head back, son. <laughs> and today we are reacting to. Taking it out on y'all. This is America Breakdown. The Childish Gambino. The Childish Gambino video. Get your money. A lot of people feel like. Get your money. Yeah, get your money. A lot of. Bro, I'm trying to talk. I'm trying to speak. Get your Make sure y'all go subscribe to True Neptune TV, man. It's gonna be some new videos coming up there. Solo videos. Just go, go subscribe over there. It's gonna be the first link in the description. I'm black man. Go subscribe to that. Um, a lot of people y'all go feel subscribe like, to that Chulo Marley. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, y'all go Marley. search that up. He <laughs> feels the greatest YouTube channel. A lot of on people, YouTube. bruh. A lot of people feel like we didn't address the video enough. They did. So we, we did. gonna go back before we watch this. We are gonna address it real quick. So we're gonna go back. We go, uh, how y'all felt about it? Okay, so how I felt about it. I mean, what you feel? He like? really addressing the obvious. You feel me? He just, you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck. Yeah, that shit's good. Go ahead. Like he really just addressing the obvious though. Like it just everyday America. Like we used to it, cause we live it. He's basically putting black people lives in front of all y'all. Yeah, cause like we we used to it though. We I'm used shit. to seeing people my colors in my neighborhood getting killed and shit. Yeah. So right. he's basically just exporting that. And then they try to cover it up with other problems. We're distracted with, with like Donald Trump and his crazy ass. Like, Kanye like, West got going is, on. It's just like, why and does any of this new matter? New dances, all that stuff. Like, but it's like the black is, experience there's no other experience like the African American experience. You can't experience it unless you're black. Like, that's the only way you can know what it's like. That's how I feel. I, I've been dealing with racism since I was what? Fucking. The first time I dealt with racism, I think I was like 15. It was in a grocery store. I ain't gonna get into it, but that was like the first time I dealt with it. Face to face. I might do a story time on it. And it was funny because my homie, he was so mad. After the fact, he didn't talk for the rest of the day. That's just how upset he was, but yeah. So, yeah. I mean, racism is like, it's an everyday thing. I mean, everybody racist. Like, we're gonna be a, a thousand percent, I mean, everybody racist, but just like, it's the difference between racism in your mind and racism in like, uh, ignorance. Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and get into this breakdown and look at this guy's input on the video and see what all we missed. Don't get you living now. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. Sean C., uh, king of the image, zoom in. And I'm back in here again. We're talking about this childish Gambino. This is America music video. Finally had some time last night to look at this thing. And I got to say, I was blown away. Not only is the song amazing, which we'll get into near the end of the video, but the music video is so layered and descriptive it, it, it's hard to watch this music video and not come away with at least an above average interpretation based off what's going on everywhere like there's so much layering so let's talk about it right uh let's not waste any time let's talk about it let's uh see what you guys think you know let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below i'm gonna tell you what i think right now uh, in the very beginning of this music video i heard this we is, get a reference based off this awkward this pose that uh childish gambino um, is standing in really really shooting this really black man somebody. unarmed in the back of the head we get a strong artistic reference toward the character Jim Crow. Those who are unfamiliar of who Jim Crow is, he's a, he's a fictional character that can easily apply to Childish Gambino. Crow was enjoyed, loved, or, or liked by black slaves. Now, we hold black artists who entertain us up on the same pedestal I'd say black slaves did with Jim Crow. So while Jim Crow was a character who entertained black slaves, what he was represented as was a symbol against blacks to show why they aren't deserving of equal treatment and integration. Jim Crow was essentially a character that was used against black people to portray them in a certain light so that we would remain segregated. In a way, you could say Jim Crow was used to distract slaves from the fact that they were indeed slaves. In the same way, Childish Gambino is portraying himself as being an artist who's being used to distract us 
from these tragic events that are going on around in the background. As the video moves forward, we continue to see these awkward faces made by Gambino, these animated dances, these strange gestures and awkward faces to distract us from the very beginning, to distract us from what's going on in the background. And it seems to be like a real conscious effort on Gambino's part when he's doing all these antics and all these different moves and gestures to really distract us from the beginning of the end. And Gambino's basically saying that he, in the past, or even up until this very moment, hasn't been an artist who's above being used to distract you from the chaos in the background, the same way the media uses some of your favorite artists to take your mind off events that directly affect your culture. It's why SZA has a cameo, it's why we get uncredited features from 21 Savage, Quavo, and Young Thug. These okay, artists are being cameo. used for your entertainment, but at the same time, trying to make it seem like the problems that affect you on a day-to-day -day basis don't time, actually exist. Up, this is on. America. Don't get you slipping now. The next thing I we see in this music video oh are these kids, goodness. these children that are following Gambino's every move. And I'm like, who are these annoying little fuckers? And then I have to pay attention to the music video again and realize they're literally copying everything that Gambino is doing. The kids in the background imitating Gambino's every move to show how much power and dominion these artists have over the new generation. Just like Gambino, the children are ignoring everything around that is until the beat of the music, the lack of rhythm and, and catchiness and sound of gunshots bring them back to reality and they're forced to run away. These children are so obsessed with the new dance craze, with, with the new music that are coming out from their favorite artists that they're not paying attention to the chaos around them. And in doing this method, they're kind of unintentionally prioritizing the lifestyle that the artist is presenting to them as opposed to caring about their safety uh caring about their future the very next reference that we get in this music video is the Imagine charleston the church like shooting and for those of you who are unaware it was a terrorist attack against a church uh committed by a young white male uh, named dylan roof yeah, killing I, nine unarmed I mean, black churchgoers yeah, you notice was, when there's a death in the music video average. gambino kind of picks up the pace as a way to show how fast we move on from these tragic events also it's a reference to gun violence because childish gambino is carefully placing these guns in these red cloths now uh, in the beginning of this i thought that maybe this was a symbol of you know america uh, really cradling these guns and really caring about these guns more than people and while that definitely is a sentiment that i can see in the music video i think it's the fact that these guns are cared for and cradled to such an extent that the 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 impact that they have on life is what's ignored. Notice that they're placed in these red cloths to kind of symbolize that these are weapons that are soaked in people's blood, but we still hold them to such a high standard. We still want them around us despite what we know they're capable of. And that's not just, you know, the police force and, and, and the government, that's also people in his communities. In the beginning of the song, Jaldis Gambino says, guns in my area, I got a strap, I got to carry them. People are also fighting for the rights of these weapons more than they're fighting for the rights of people. As we continue to move into the video, the, 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 the violence gets a little bit more intensified. The, the riots, the, we see kids sitting on top recording, you know, doing nothing, not really uh, feeling the need to aid the situation or feeling any responsibility to their community or, or their race. It's basically showing how people can be right next to a situation and be so disconnected from it. In the midst of all this chaos and police brutality and the riots going on around them they're still dancing around their idol and then we get this biblical reference i assume um, to I the white horse that, that is basically I mean, a symbol probably. of conquest meaning the beginning of the end or the start of the apocalypse now this next part of the music video had me a little bit confused or a little bit thrown off because we can clearly see the guy who who for one is not trayvon martin's father for those of you who keep dming me that on twitter yes all black bald men with beards are not the same after like two minutes of research you can find out this guy is an la artist i believe his name is calvin the second but i'm assuming he's placed in the music video after his death again is to kind of show you how we value entertainment information that's my first real assumption in this music video let's not forget childish gambino is a black artist so by the time we get to the end of the video and he's running and it's something he's accepted he can't ignore after the artists are done entertaining and the music begins to fade and the crowd is gone it's right at gambino's doorstep he can either confront it or he can flee. But the lack of support he has, I feel is why he's fleeing in the end of the video. If there were just as many artists taking the stance of Gambino, I don't really think he'd feel the need to run. If he had just as much backup, if he had just as much support, 
this whole mob behind him wouldn't even be behind him. As Childish Gambino begins running, we get the out vocals from Young Thug saying, you just a black man in this world, you just a barcode. And he's basically insinuating oh, that no matter that. how far uh, black artists get in this world, they still have to deal with the struggles of any average black person yep. at some point. He can't escape his reality. Despite how much he may entertain those white people, he's in the position that he's in just for that reason to entertain those white people. The culture he's referencing is being used simply to entertain those people for the moment. But the second he speaks out or, or has something to say beyond just being a black face for white entertainment, they're trying to silence him. Gambino is making a statement to hip hop and to R&B and to all these black genres to stay focused not on trendy dances and new trap music. He blames himself, the artist, and confronts them with the task of not just being another Jim Crow, to distract people who are already affected on a daily basis by these issues, whether they know it or not, but instead to take note of that influence and fame you brag so much about in your music and keep people informed and be more responsible or the cycle is going to continue. At the end of this music video, Childish Gambino is being overwhelmed with the same task that he's challenging hip hop with. Because of how disconnected artists are from one another and how few of them share this goal and how there's a lack of community in hip hop especially, he feels the need to run and, or, or, or to flee. He feels the need to retreat essentially. No one he's running from is fighting with or for him. Instead, they're trying to silence him. And yeah, by the look on his face, he's terrified. This whole video is a reference to the the double life of an artist, uh, whether or not they're doing the right thing and how difficult it must be for Childish Gambino to want to put people on information, but at the same time, want to be silenced by the same industry that popularized him. At the end of the day, this is something that Gambino is saying in it. In per All right, so this is our final input on it. Um, I totally agree with what he, what he was saying in the end about us. black people just used to be entertained and once they step outside of that, you can look at examples like Kaepernick and LeBron with him, people spray paint on his house and when he'll say certain stuff on Twitter, they'll be like, just shut up and play basketball and stuff like that. So that's pretty obvious right there. And um, yeah, um, see, even with like, we gotta think about it. Like, really, who run the entertainment business? Black, it's really white people running, yeah. but, but black behind the scenes. Like, the highest, these athletes are highly paid, but who the owners are. Like, these owners ain't shooting the basketball. You feel me? They're not putting in the work, but they, like, the revenue is a bit different. They billionaires versus millionaires. You got the rap game the same way. Like, Basically, they sign their checks. So yeah. They, that means their checks are bigger. So it's just like, you feel me? Like, and then I, I seen somebody else input on it. It's this girl from uh, The Great Vine TV. I don't know if y'all watch that YouTube channel. Her name's Saran. She was basically saying how she felt like Charles Gambino was exploiting the black experience and making profit out of it. Y'all feel like you doing that? Nah. I mean, but like, you know what I'm saying? Why not make profit out of it? Like, why not though? Cause like, that's just like what LeVar Ball is what he does. They got so much criticism about LeVar Ball, but if he don't do it, the white man gonna do it. I feel it. like he's doing it the right way. But if he don't do it, the white man gonna do it. So why not, you know what I'm saying, try to enrich yourself off of what they're gonna do. You feel me? Like, why should my son, why should you, why should I feel bad because I won't let you sign my son's check? Why my son can't sign his own check? So it's just like, you know what I'm saying, they gonna, Everything a black person do get criticized. Everything. Don't nothing you. It ain't nothing you can't do that won't get criticized. Like, but if the white man do it, then it's okay. You feel me? Like, I had to say it like that, but it's just true. Like, who run the world? But who's the most talented people in the world? Because hip hop is the most popular, like, worldwide. Yeah, and then they tried to say at one point hip hop was that be the most it's music. vulgar, it's so it's, it's vulgar, and all of this is disrespectful to women. I mean, that's the exact hip hop that they uh promote the most, yeah. But like, yeah, that's what you promote, you feel me? Like, that's what you promote. Like, when these labels go out for artists, they go out for people like Love Pump and 6 9 and artists like that. Sure. Who ain't they go for the ones who gonna get them paid, yeah. They all about the dollars. But 
So uh, let us know y'all input. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and we're gonna see y'all next video. Alright? We out.